So, will PyScript with Python ever kill JavaScript and make it obsolete? Well, in this particular video, we'll take a look on the newly released PyScript that allows you to run Python and HTML with JavaScript and natively running in the browser with no dependencies needed. And we're going to take a look on like behind the scenes, the architecture of how that works, how it made possible, is it performant enough? And of course, we're going to take a look on the demos and examples and the actual potential of what you can do using PyScript plus Python. So if you've been following the news in the last couple of days, there has been an app absolutely crazy change in the ecosystem in the industry of web development python data science and everything so you probably have already heard about PyScript and the potential of actually grabbing python or running python into directly the browser without a backend needed without like an actual like an installation that you need to install something specific nothing like that everything using just a specific script and you will run with javascript and with html like it just you run in a particular library or something and it's absolutely amazing so PyScript has been out for the last couple of days, as I said before, and a lot of people have been like experimenting with it and everything. And yes, it's still in the alpha version. So this is absolutely not a complete, it's just like at the start. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to see what is the actual fundamental architecture of PyScript and how does it actually make it possible to run Python directly in the browser without like no installation, no backend server, nothing at all. How can it do that? Well, let's go ahead and jump into like exactly this architecture right over here so if i try to take a look into down here I, I got this architecture from the actual official website in here and this architecture what it says for example in here if you take a look on it so let me just zoom out a little bit so you're gonna see a lot of stacks right so it starts from top from bottom to top right and it starts with wasm so if you're not familiar with wasm it's actually what runs or what allows you to compile any particular language it's actually a binary format and it allows you for example to compile c plus plus any language like java anything and run it directly into the browser so it's actually web assembly this is what wasm is and it stands for web assembly this is just the extension of it so this is the main main fundamental kind of thing that allows this particular running because python as we all know it it's it's more of like a native thing and it's yes it's interpreted and everything but it doesn't support to run in the browser but using wasm it actually makes it possible to run in the browser the next one is actually mscripting which is just a compiler that compiles different languages like c c plus plus and stuff into wasm so this is just a compiler that allows that and there is c python and many many other layers in here and this one is all of those are being held by pyode so pyode in here is is actually the library and it has existed forever and this particular library that allows you to basically run python in the browser yes it has been there it has been there for for some time actually and it allows you to actually run python in, in the actual browser but it doesn't provide that kind of sustainability and maintainability and that kind of like a standard approach to run python in a good way for production stuff right so it gives you so much stuff in here going on that's why actually PyScript is built on top of this so it already uses pyode but it adds so much stuff in, into it to make it kind of like standard and make it like work with most browsers and make it like reliable and it adds a lot of features that allows that to work particularly with javascript as well and and actually do so much more and if you go to this of course this binding is basically going to allow you to use python or maybe any other language really if we just like have the particular specific Python for that particular language, you can use C, C++, Rust, Go, so much stuff. And of course, you can do Python with Wasman here and mscripting and pyode. And this will make it possible to most of the browsers. It's it's absolutely crazy just to think about it, but that's actually possible. And luckily for us, PyScript actually provides a lot of examples that we can, you know, dig deeper into it and see that actually in real world and how everything is working together. For example, it provides like a streaming demo in here to stream a bits of data and actually plot that in a graph. And it's it's actually pretty, pretty good in here with all that plotting and everything. It works really well uh, with performance. There are some degradations, of course, but this is is actually doable and does it absolutely great and of course this is very very promising and also what i want to talk about is actually the cons and what i don't like about this particular release because it's an alpha version and there are some bits and teeny tiny stuff that i don't really like so for example in here you're gonna find a really slowish kind of like experience when reloading the page and when doing that for development so that's quite bad and also it loads scripts from the cdn which i don't really like and it just kind of like you know it depends on the network and everything so it's not really that good and also what i struggled with is like no documentation yet of course because 
this there will be a documentation as soon as possible so yeah i, I don't I don't i didn't find actually any documentation so it's very hard to use PyScript for anything really uh, other than just looking at the examples and trying to you know deduce some stuff from it uh but overall that's a pretty good experience PyScript is absolutely great to get started with and and just to open up the doors into using python in the browser so to be able to actually test PyScript and see the full potential of typescript or PyScript, sorry, you actually need to go ahead into the repository and actually clone that. So I already did clone that. I went to the open source repository in here, cloned it, and it has basically some examples in there. It has too many examples. So if you head over here to like a hello word where you get inside, you see it's just basically an HTML, right? And the good part of all, about all of those is actually loading the PyScript in here, the PyScript.js in here, you have to load that. And also you have to load the PyScript.css in here. It's not mandatory, but it's better to load that to make PyScript work fine. And that is it. That's that's literally all you need to do. And just make sure to, when you load the script, make sure to like put that defer. And if you're wondering like from where to get the actual script in here, the build script, of course you can download from the PyScript.net or you can get it from the GitHub repo or you can build that from source, which is pretty easy as well. Awesome. And the next part in here to do is actually all you have to do, you can have HTML, right? This is just regular HTML, hello word, uh, the current date and time. But if you head over to PyScript in here, you're going to find that actually like, oh, this PyScript, the PyScript, the end or the start and the closing tags, this is where you put your Python code. And as you see, I'm doing from date time, import date time, and we're getting the now time. And then we just like doing now in here. And this would just like output this to the HTML and just go in and print it. And and that will be available in the HTML. It's, it's absolutely crazy just to think about it. And it's actually as simple as that. Nothing else is needed. And all you have to do is do it that particular way. If you jump to another example, for example, there is a simple clock. The simple clock is pretty simple as well. It's just like you can give it like the Pi script in here. Uh, the Pi ENV in here, what it does, it basically allows you to define Python modules, your custom Python modules, and tell you, oh, I have this particular module I want to import later on. So that's why it allows us to import utils in here. So we're telling it, oh, the paths, and with this particular schema in here, you have to use this particular syntax right over here, otherwise it won't work for you. Uh, so you just put paths in here and you give it the actual path. So I want to include utils, which is a Python module, of course, and once you import that, you can actually use it in here. And you do PyScript, you close it with another PyScript, and that is it. And of course, you can do any Python magic inside of this. Of course, it has to be supported by the PyScript. Most of them are supported, but you might find some issues and kind of like incompatibilities and, and different weird behaviors between this and that. Uh, but overall, this is, should be working fine. So if you head over to the actual demo page, I have got plenty of demos. I'm going to jump to the simple clock really and as you see it takes some time if i open up the actual dev tools um sorry guys i need the dev tools where you go the actual time actually started but it took a couple of seconds before it did that and as you see just it puts all of those together and if you take a look on the script that's that's actually what printing the espresso time uh if you head over back as you see just you know, whenever it finds four or eight, it, it tells you espresso time. And there are plenty of logs to take a look at. And this is basically like the communication back and forth between the actual Python and the JavaScripts and the actual browser. So um, yeah, this is you can you can take a look on, on so many details and so many information or verbose information in here. So the project actually has so many examples and so many stuff that you can actually rely on and see the potential of that uh, from actually plotting using the matplots library, which is a pretty famous library in Python to plot different graphs and different type of data visualizations and everything uh, to basically using that with different plotting mechanism as well and math in that data science maybe you want to do ray casting in here with with open gl kind of libraries and the rendering so you see the rendering is pretty fast uh, it's pretty good and everything so this is this is quite interesting uh data science as well like the key means algorithms so just it does visualization it does everything it gives you control and and just like shockingly this is all being done in python really so many stuff like you know bokeh example in here for visualization again and actually an editor that allows you to move and and zoom in and zoom out uh maybe maybe you're going to look into the taxi stuff i don't know why it's not no loading uh and most in interestingly what i found as well is actually this mario game that you can play and actually jumps i don't know how, how to jump sorry so yeah the the, the, the mario game in here as crazy you can play and it's playable uh has so many stuff i'm bad at mario but 
you see just the potential of how all of those are being done and, and how you can make that possible. It's actually really, really great and, and all of that kind of stuff. So to see the actual potential of PyScript and will it actually just, you know, just give you a better experience compared to JavaScript for now? And how does it integrate with HTML? How does it integrate with JavaScript? Will you be able to use uh, DOM manipulation methods and all sorts of stuff? to basically to know if this is possible or not and to give it an experiment what i try to do is actually to create this particular simple application in here which basically goes into an api and it fetches a products a list of products like a 30 um you know different type of product from a restful api of course and i, I try to actually develop that and, and i actually you know, try to see how everything works. So it's clear in here. Uh, this is the HTML, it uses PyScript, of course, and it has the binaries and everything. And I'm actually loading the index.py in here. So if you head over to the index.py, it has a main method and this main function or main uh, method in here, you can call it whatever. So this is just being called in here. And of course it's asynchronous and it has plethora of different stuff in order to make that possible. And to actually see that from a different perspective and to, you know, take a one step back and take a closer look into how this is actually working, that's actually pretty, pretty promising and it's not bad at all. So compared to JavaScript and how everything works, as you see here, I'm using some familiar methods or some familiar DOM methods already in here. I'm using window.document.getElementsYD. How, how is that possible? You're probably wondering. That's basically I'm importing those from the GS file in here, and this was made possible by Pyode. And of course, it was emphasized and made you know a lot better and, and more stable uh, using the PyScript, of course. So you can easily import different objects and different stuff like the console, alert, uh, maybe the documents as well. You can all import it from the actual GS library in here in Python, and you can freely use it with the same API no changes at all and that's actually pretty pretty well i found that's pretty good so it's producing him using the window.fetch so I'm, that's pretty awesome i'm using await because python has async await as well but it's a little bit different than javascript but it still works absolutely fine i try to convert that to json and uh, i get the products in here i go ahead and get the products elements by id i can do that i can use the console this will go in a console log i loop through the products and once I loop in here, I go to each element, creates a new element in here, different images and divs and titles. I set different attributes for the ID so the CSS can take effect. And of course, I'm putting the CSS right here, like the products, the products image in here, and so many stuff. So I'm putting that right over there. Uh, let me close that real quick. So we got the title, I set the title, I have an on click. So you can do on clicks and you're not gonna be using like the arrow functions or the inline JavaScript arrow functions. You can't use that of course, because you're in Python, but likely, Python implements the lambdas, which is pretty good. They are basically the same way. So to answer the question that everyone, literally everyone has been asking and wondering, will this actually the PyScript with Python and HTML, will it ever replace JavaScript in the near or the far future? Well, potentially no. Well, this is actually, I'm not gonna say this is a, not like possible or i'm not gonna say this is impossibly to do yes this will be an absolutely great technology this will be an absolutely amazing it open up a new doors you open up new technologies uh, it's going to improve the performance it's going to get rid of like for example you're going to have tensorflow machine learning ai pytorch all of those running in the browser natively using python and this is going to increase the performance like tons and tons but still javascript is is that very powerful language and as we all know familiar with javascript it has so much libraries so many of them and in fact javascript is like ranking the first in the world right now and yeah I, like you can't say just make a javascript obsolete or you can't get rid of it just like that but yes this is a very potential project really awesome i'm really excited to see what's going to come up next uh, as of now you can't make like really good tutorials or like can you go too deeper into this because there's no documentation and you can't explore of this so uh yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this particular video hope you guys actually took a look on how this kind of pieces work together and how PyScript script work together just a quick introduction uh, so yeah hope you guys enjoyed as i said before catch you all hopefully in the next ones